Hey, this is Aaron, the Metal Theologian, and uh, today, um, I've, you know, I've talked before about how uh, I got rid of, I used to have CDs, but I got rid of them all a long time ago, and I really only have vinyl anymore and a few tapes. Um, I thought it might be kind of a laugh to show what CDs survived, so uh, what I'm going to do in this video is show off my entire CD collection. But first of all, I'm going to have a little tip of the hat to a Grown Man Record Night. I uh, got what was, uh, by consensus back in the 100th episode, deemed uh, the best uh, soda ever to come out of Soda Speak. So I'm going to bust this bad boy open and have a uh, quick drink here. Jesus, that's good. That's the fucking uh, Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer. I'll give it an enthusiastic second to... Uh, the guys in North Carolina. Damn, that's some really good shit. But if you can't take sugar, you gotta stay the hell away because it's sweet as fuck. But uh, it's kind of like cream soda with like a real heavy sort of butterscotch thing. The cream soda thing is awesome because my older kid, he usually drinks all my soda. He doesn't like cream soda. So I'll just say, oh, it's like cream soda. And he'll leave it alone and I can drink all four. So four pack was kind of expensive, but... Alright, so anyways, first video with no vinyl. So uh, I'm just going to show my CDs. Uh, it might be worth a laugh to see what survived uh, successive purges. Um, at my peak, I probably had about 500. Um, I got rid of them. I had fallen on a kind of hard times at that point, but uh, I also decided I just didn't care about them anymore. So there are a couple in here that are, either, that are things that just plain survived for some reason or another. There are things that uh, I actually kept deliberately, and I'll talk about each one. So first of all, Two bar CD, sort of a classic. This thing was a uh, one of the things I listened to in high school. Um, I actually have this on record. I bought it on vinyl in Washington D.C., but I still have the CD. The next one is um, an old uh, old metal CD of uh, Stunt Rock by uh, Sorcery. It's actually one of the first sort of more expensive records that I've got. I've had this on vinyl for a long time, but. Uh, they only did 50 of these, and uh, Old Metal Records was such a fucking cool label anyway. I know some of you guys will second that. So there we go. Also had the first couple of Outlaw releases. This uh, unquestionable Mistreater CD, which is limited to 25, but has the uh, OLR001 catalog number. Kind of proud of that. It's funny, most of these I have on record, and I kept them anyway. That Mistreater, I think I showed. And then this one, this classic, which is Witchcraft Coven Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls. I actually had this on record before I had the CD, but it's so awesome. Fucking camera's blurring out, because it's not used to seeing CDs. My camera's going, what the fuck, it's CDs, I don't know what to do with that shit. I just got used to the vinyl, and... So there's that, it's a little bit better. This is kind of a cool one. I'd forgotten about this one, so I went through. Um, the guy from Doomed Planet um, actually planned on doing a reissue of this um, Ritual record, which is a obscure-ass Belgian record, uh, which is very cool, actually. Four tracks. I um, might show that someday, too. But um, basically, the release fell through. There's actually a little insert in here that has the whole story about how they planned it, and it just ended up not coming to fruition. But what he kind of did was made of just a few copies of the CD. I mean, this is obviously... It would be a bootleg if he distributed it, but he didn't. It was just sort of something he let a few people have, which just has uh, the songs from the EP on it and a couple of, uh, you know, demo tracks and things like that and some things they recorded in later incarnations. So not a lot of these around, but it's a pretty cool thing if you're in the right place at the right time. It's funny. This is one that I showed on record, too, but uh, this is the Nine Days Wonder first album on CD. It actually has a Bacillus thing on the disc, but um, the only reason this thing is here is because it survived. Like, no one bid on eBay or something like that, because I wouldn't have kept that. I probably only kept this one, because the 3D glasses in it are really useful. 
I don't remember if y'all remember when, like, that first, that Mars rover, like, first landed or something like that, and there was some special 3D thing they showed on CNN, and they were like, get your 3D glasses, because blah, 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 these are the 3D glasses I used, so. I'd like to get this on record, but it's ridiculously expensive, given that it's not the greatest Voivod record. I'm as big a fan as I am, I'm not inclined to cough up 200 fucking dollars for that thing. This is definitely a bootleg. This is a uh, new wave of British heavy metal demo tapes. If you can see that, super cheesy. Especially since two of those covers exist. One shows the Jaguar logo, and there's no Jaguar on here. There is a Guardian Records logo, which doesn't seem to exist either. It has two Satan demos and two Grim Reaper demos, which I don't know if you can see that. Give that thing a second. But it actually says Grim Peeper. Like it's spelled like Grim Reaper, but with a P at the beginning instead of an R. So yeah, it's a lot less intimidating that way. And then it also has a fucking super coarse, like really shit quality uh, demo by that band Kraken from Canada. You know, with the white cover? If not, I'll show it sometime. But uh, you all probably know about that record. It was kind of easy to find for a while. So, uh, before I went vinyl only, I actually had a lot of Kraut stuff on CD, and there was one series of stuff that I really freaked out over, and I had all of these, and I thought I still did, but uh, maybe not, because I could only find two. But these were the uh, Sci-Fi ones on the PSI-Fi, and these were the uh, ostensible Pyramid releases, which uh, at least the guys behind the... Uh, the Freeman Brothers, that crack in the Cosmic Egg book, seemed to have substantiated pretty well that they did exist, but that was sort of controversial for a while, whether they were actually legitimate or anything. I think the Temple one is the best one, I don't have that anymore, but uh, the Cosmic Corridors one is pretty cool. I remember one time the Mormons came over, and I was living in San Francisco, and they wanted to, like, show me pictures in the Book of Mormon and shit like that, and so I was like, yeah, come on in, and I, like, bullshit with them, I was probably high, realistically. I like, cracked open a beer and played this Cosmic Corridor CD while I was rapping with the Mormons. Stoned. Yeah, those were the days. I also still have this one, uh, the Golem Orion Awake CD, which they've redone on a vinyl, actually. I think Lion put this out, and so I actually have this one on record now, too, but um, it's another story. Yeah, another story about the Mormons. I actually used to do that all the time back like in the 90s when I was smoking a lot of weed. I'd have the Mormons over and just sort of hang out with them. I mean, not that I was so lonesome and I needed the Mormons for company, but I just thought it was kind of fun to have them come over and, like, argue with them and shit like that. And they'd be like, you know, like, I actually took the trouble to read, like, The Pearl of Great Price. And, like, they'd be like, oh, well, here's a picture of God and Jesus hanging out with Joseph. And I'm like, no, let's talk about this thing over The Pearl of Great Price. It's more interesting. I actually called the 800 number one time and said, hey, could you send some more experienced missionaries? Because these 19-year-olds kind of ain't cutting it. I want to get into, like, the theology of it. And uh, they can't really hang. So, I don't know, it's kind of a dick thing to do in retrospect in a way. Because like, these are like these young kids and they're sincere. But it was pretty funny. Anyway. Um, this one, I don't know how many of these are out there actually. This is a band called Nucleon. They just made this one CD that I know of called Hyper Emitter. And I've actually looked for it on YouTube and not seen much. Although I think they posted one song not too long ago. Um, I went to Cleveland one time about 12 years ago, very just like for a weekend because the Easter Monkeys were playing, and I love the fucking Easter Monkeys, and I was in a position where I could get plane tickets pretty much for free, so that's another story. But anyway, I popped up there for a weekend to see the Easter Monkeys with a bunch of other things. I was there for two nights. The night before the Easter Monkeys show, I uh, just went to a club. I want to say it was the Grog Shop, but that doesn't feel right. Anyway, I went somewhere with a friend of mine, just sort of randomly, and this band was playing. And they were fucking fantastic, man. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed this band. So, um, this one has survived a couple of purges. Um, this would be a candidate for release on Beer and Jesus if I didn't think I'd lose more money again. But uh, this is a great thing. If you get a chance to hear Nucleon, man, this one not only survived, but like is going to continue to survive, even kind of getting rid of, rid of the rest of these. Okay, the last few are box sets. This one uh, comes in a pretty flimsy box, but it's the Destroy All Monsters, the early shit. Now, that album is a lot better known. The self-titled one they put out in, like, 77 or 78 with Ron Ashton from the Stooges and all that shit. But this is all just, like, weird, like, noisy shit that uh, 
a couple of you at least would probably pretty much hate because it's just like tape collage sort of sounding and just like weird ass shit. I listened to this and it blew my mind. In fact, look at these covers inside here. It's fucking fantastic. This is a ecstatic piece actually, if I'm not mistaken. And they did a hell of a job. You know, look at that. Like, when it comes to metal shit, which is kind of my forte, you know, I look for really cheesy hand-drawn shit. But if I'm looking for punk, which I haven't in a long time, but uh, this is the kind of shit that gets my juices flowing. Look at that. Can you see it? I say, can you see it like you can answer? I guess you can answer in the comments, but by then it's too fucking late, because it's not like I'm going to redo it. Yeah, so anyway, this is right up my alley. I don't listen to much punk anymore. Most of what I do listen to is like, uh, like that whole Cleveland sound, like the Electric Eels, the Mirrors, Rocket from the Tombs, that shit, and sort of bands from around that sound like them, like Simply Saucer. I really like the Twinkies out of Sacramento, and uh, I don't know, like, you know, Velvet's ripoff bands, basically. Okay, the second last CD that I kept is this. I do not have the uh, Walter Wegmuller tarot on record, and uh, hopefully I'll score it one of these days, but even like the Italian reissues are really expensive. So I think, there we go. This one was the limited edition long box that had the tarot double disc right here, and then the actual set of tarot cards that came with it. So like, some Swiss dude with a really entertaining accent like took the trouble to paint these tarot cards and uh, I could read your tarot if I knew what the fuck I was doing, so. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really that interested, but it's pretty awesome and it kind of goes with the whole package. And this is a great record, if you're into like the German like space rock shit. Like, a lot of the shit that uh, Julian Cope hyped, I think he kind of overhyped, like, especially some of the, like, those mid-period Almond Duel ones, and I like Ashrod Temple just fine, but I don't think it's, like, the last word in fucking, you know, so-called kraut rock, but this one, it was good enough to keep, okay? And finally, I still have this thing. This is the Plastic People of the Universe box set. It's funny because uh, yeah, check this out. This is pretty much unbelievable. My camera kind of sucks for the. Well, actually, it's not my camera. It's my setup. But if you see that, it actually had a piece of like whatever in it, and, like a authentic number thing saying it was number eight hundred and eighty-seven. This fucking thing just came with it. I bought, it was sealed, but that came with it, so of course I kept it. And then it has this huge book. Oh, fuck. God damn. Fuck, I almost fell off my little ass desk here. And then look at that. See that cloth like lining in there? And it has eight CDs in it by the Plastic People, including, uh, you know, a couple original albums like uh, Modest Mouse. Or Midnight Mouse, so that sucked. <laughs> um, like Leading Horses, I know came out on its own, but also like this one, which is probably my favorite. I don't think I ever saw a release before this box set. Slava Nemesis, I guess it's called. I used to have this one on record. I kind of wish I had kept it. I used to have an original Egon Bondi's uh, Happy Hearts Club Band. But yeah, I like the Plastic People a lot. It's not as much as I used to. They're a little Frank Zappa-ish now, like, as far as the whole sort of comedy angle that he was into. And I still like Zappa just fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to talk shit about Zappa or anything else. Well, some others, but not Zappa. Um, they're a little bit more Zappa-y than the sort of my taste these days. And a little bit less the Fugsy, which apparently was their other sort of big influence. But, um... I still love this band. There's a special place in my heart for the Plastic People, and uh, I haven't seen one of these since I bought it, which was pretty much when it came out in the early 90s. So yeah, that's uh, 
that one has survived successive purges as well. All right, so that is pretty much it for my CD collection. <laughs> that's it. That's everything. <laughs> one video. I don't know how long this fucking thing is right now, but I told a couple stories too, so whatever. But do the same thing with records. The video would be like, well, whatever. I'm not going to brag about my record collection. You'll see more. Point is, there are more videos coming for, for records. I just blew my wad on CDs. That's it, guys. So, hey, once again, uh, look at that shit. Shout out to Grown Man Record Night. Thanks.